So instead of unsweating the old one and then soldering in the new one, we're able to take the parts and the guts out of the new one and install them inside of the one that's in place. So that makes it very good. But the first thing you gotta do is depressurize it. You can't just walk up to it and take it apart. So we gotta connect some gauges to it and start valving it off. So we valve off the discharge line and then we valve off the liquid line and then we allow the circuit to fully pump down or pump down to suction header pressure. Once at header pressure, we need to close off the suction side ball valve, but you'll have some remaining pressure left in the circuit that will need to be removed with a recovery machine and recovery tank. This will get it down to zero PSI and we can open the circuit up safely. I also like to switch off the circuit being worked on before removing the solenoid coil. Now we can remove the coil screw and the valve nameplate and lift the coil off of the enclosing tube. Preferably a large crescent wrench or even a pipe wrench would be the best option, but if you have to use a channel lock, make sure you take extra care not to strip the brass lock nut. Once you've broke the seal, you can carefully unscrew it from the body and lift it off. Be careful as there may be some pressure still trapped on the inlet side. So you should have identically matching internal components as what you have in the new valve assembly. On this particular job, I had a broken manual stem. You can see the difference here when I compare the two. This one clearly has it and the other one doesn't. Next, I'll carefully remove the good stem out of the new valve body. And then I'll take the old one out of the one that's in place. See, you can tell it's broken. Here's the two next to each other. Kind of look down in the bore, make sure that there's nothing in there, nothing foreign, and then carefully screw in the new valve stem, manual stem. Tighten it down good and tight with a wrench, and then put your cap on it. Now this kit has two springs and then a tiny little spring guide and you want to make sure that those things are sliding in your enclosing tube and that they bounce sort of like this and then you'll have it upside down and you'll set your, your plunger and your disc in there and now I want you to pay attention to this little seal that's right here that has a crack and a break in it. You got to squeeze that. Notice how I squeeze it? See I squeeze it? And only when I squeeze it can I fit this gasket on there. This is the, the main gasket. and then we're ready to take all that together and we're going to insert that into the body of the valve and then once again i have to squeeze it watch me squeeze it and it's going to drop right in see that's perfect now you've got the lock nut i'm going to put the lock nut on there and now there's a right way and a wrong way to hold channel locks this is the right way you've got to tighten it this direction if you hold it backwards, you're going to strip whatever you're trying to tighten, so don't do that. And now, we just got to secure the solenoid coil onto the new enclosing tube, and we'll do that with the nameplate and the coil screw, and then now you're ready to evacuate and restart. Once you've reached the deep vacuum, you want to break the vacuum with opening the liquid line first, and you can open the suction line, and then the last thing you're going to do is open the discharge gas ball valve. Now your circuit should be back up and running. You want to make sure you don't have any leaks or that you created any leaks. And then you want to verify operation that it's working the way it's supposed to. Usually that's just done by looking at the controller, the computer, checking the temperature, monitoring it for a little bit. Here I noticed immediately that my temperature started to drop and my freezer went from a positive 2 degrees or 3 degrees down into the negatives within like 5 or 10 minutes. So in this case I was just making sure that the freezer circuit restarted. You want to make sure that it defrosts well. A follow-up visit a couple days later to make sure that it's defrosting properly making sure that the coil isn't froze up anymore. All of that is good practice and stuff we should be doing.